Today we're gonna to show you how to quickly enhance any photo using Photoshop on the iPhone. Hello and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and Photoshop on the iPhone is officially here. We've been waiting a long time and I am super impressed with its functionality. So today we're going to show you everything you need to know to make quick edits with your photos, including removing distractions and drawing more attention to your subject. Let's go ahead and jump on into Photoshop on the iPhone. So we're getting started. At the top, you can see you can use your own photos. You can use a new blank canvas, generate an image using AI or from Adobe Stock. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a photo from our camera roll. So at the bottom right, let's go ahead and click the plus icon. We're gonna go to add from photos. Here we go. And then we're just gonna choose this latest photo that we have. It's really nice. We have some quick actions that it suggests by default. We can hide the background. We can choose a solid color background or a black and white background. In this case, we're just going to go directly to the editor. Now for this image, I want to go ahead and start by removing distractions. This is a big one, a big reason why we go into Photoshop in general. It's just to get rid of stuff that we don't want to see. And in this case, it's just kind of these like little poles here in the background. So we're going to start, we can use two fingers to pinch and zoom into the area we'd like to edit. There we go. And down here in the bottom, we're going to click on retouch. So retouch, I recommend using the remove tool. Now for this, let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to click on this new layer icon. You can see a new layer has been added. At any time, you can click and drag out and see all of your layers. So click and drag up or down to see all of your layers. You can see I am on a new layer. And we want to make sure that this icon right here is checked. This is going to allow me to sample all layers. This way I can turn this layer off and on at any time. Okay. Now with this tool, it's actually extremely easy to use. All you have to do, you can click right here on your remove tool one more time and you can change the brush size. There we go. You can put it about the right size for the object you want to remove. Fantastic. And then I'm simply using my finger here and I want to paint over this object that we want to remove. Now, every time you release your finger, it's going to make the calculation and remove that object. Now, if it doesn't do exactly what you want, that's okay. You can hit this undo button right up at the very top. We're going to go ahead and take our size. So I'm going to bring this down just a little bit more. And we're going to go ahead and paint in there and say, you know what? We want a little bit of a different result there. So we're just going to kind of paint that and see what we get this time. Yeah, it looked pretty good. So let's go ahead. We're going to just paint this a little bit more two fingers to click and drag over the right hand side and we can simply paint to remove that now this is using ai generative fill same technology that we have available in the full build of photoshop to remove all of these items so really we don't have to do much technical here you just simply paint over the items you'd like to remove photoshop does the rest and if you don't like it just hit undo and try it again there we go all right that looks pretty good and we're just going to paint right over here to just remove the rest of our distractions. Fantastic. So here we can see I'm just using two fingers to click and drag. Our image is already quite a bit better. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and hit this back button. The next thing I would like to do is make our image a little bit larger. We're going to go to this size option on the bottom right. Let's go ahead and click on size. And now we can choose all of our different presets of where we would like to upload our image. In this case, I just want to make this a little bit wider. So we're going to go ahead and click and drag our image wider on both the left and the right side. There we go. Fantastic. And then we're going to use generative expand, which is this colored icon down at the bottom. So generative expand. There you go. You can type something in if you'd like to. In this case, I'm just going to hit generate and it's going to expand our image. This is so amazing to be able to do this on the iPhone. It really allows you to put it in a lot of different places. For instance, if you want to put this on your different social media accounts, maybe you didn't have enough on the left or the right or the top or the bottom, you can just expand this using AI. And there we go. This is expanded. It's looking great. Now, in this case, it expanded and it did actually add that little pull. So I can go to my generative expand layer. We can go ahead and go out to this generative expand layer. There we go. By the way, to get to any of your layers, you can simply click here on your layer stack. You can scroll up or down to see your different layers. And if you want to get more information from a layer, you simply click and drag to the left. Now here with this generative expand, let's just go ahead and see on the bottom we have variations. So I'm going to click on variations 
and we can see now I have a few different variations. So if I didn't like that one with that little pole there, I can get back to this layer at any time and view a couple variations, which is so nice. All right, let's go ahead and click on that check and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and close out our layers. Now our subject looks great. I just want to add like a little bit of bright area to our subject. It's going to help her stand out from the background. So we're going to go down to the bottom to select area. Now with select area, this icon is really important right here, which is going to sample from all of our layers. Because as you can see right now, I'm just on my generative expand layer. And if I don't have the select all layers uh, selected, chosen, it's just going to try to choose from the generative expand layer. So we want to make sure that this icon here, there we go. We'll just turn that right on and then we can select our subject. Now that our subject is selected, we're going to click on this checkbox on the bottom right. There we go. And we can choose, we could generative fill if we wanted to remove this subject, or I'm going to simply hit adjust area. And for this, I can adjust the hue, saturation, brightness, contrast, black and white, color balance, exposure, curves, and vibrance. Let's just go to brightness and contrast. And I'm just going to make my subject just a little bit brighter so she stands out from the background. Let's go ahead and hit that checkbox. I think we're looking good. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a vignette to the outside of the image. It's just going to make the borders darker. And again, it's going to help us focus more on the subject. So to do that, we're going to go again to select area. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and move over to the right hand side. We're going to go to our ellipse. So I'm going to click and drag out. There we go. Two fingers to move in and out. We're going to click and drag an ellipse right around our image. There we go. And we've made our selection. Now, you can inverse your selection right down here using the inverse icon at any point in time. So let's go ahead and inverse our selection. We're going to hit this checkbox there. And then we're going to go to adjust area. We're going to go to brightness and contrast once more. And now we're going to bring the brightness down just a little bit. And you can see it's going to help us focus on our subject. But we have a little bit of an issue. You can see the outline really easily. So we just want to make sure we blur that. So let's go ahead and click on this checkbox right up there. Now for my layer, I can actually click and drag out for this layer and we can see all of the layers that we've already created. Now this brightness contrast layer at the very top, this is what's making the border a little bit darker. We're going to go down to where it says modify mask. Let's go ahead and click there and we can click on feather on the bottom. And there we go. We can simply adjust our feathering. We're just going to bring this number up. I wish there was a live preview of the feathering. Uh, to I'm just kind of like guessing at a number that would feather the edge. Right now, you don't get a live preview, but we'll just try about 300 pixels and hit that checkbox. And you can see our edge has been feathered. You can just go ahead and feather more. Let's just type in 400 and hit OK. And you do have a nice preview here where it starts to go from, you know, your transparent pixels to the opaque pixels. All right, let's go ahead and click on that checkbox. And you can see, let's close this out, that in fact, our image looks so much better. We have a lot more attention towards our subject. So if you click and drag here out with your layers, just drag to the left or the right. You can then view this off and on by clicking on this eyeball here. So you can see what that actually did with our image. And there we go. You can see in just a few minutes, we've removed distractions, expanded our image, brightened up our subject and added a vignette all with Photoshop on the iPhone. Now, I think my favorite feature here is when you choose to export this out, you can put it as a JPEG, which you can put immediately on social media, or you can actually export this out as a PSD and then edit it on your computer. So we're going to click on this export icon. You can see you can quick export as a PNG. You can just hit export and then you can choose whether you'd like it to be a JPEG, a PSD or a TIFF. In this case, we're just going to do a JPEG. Let's choose our uh, quality a bit higher. We're going to click on export and it's going to save this directly to the camera roll on my camera. I can put it wherever I want. We're going to go to save image at the bottom. We're just going to go ahead and hit allow. And now this image is here on my phone. So I've gone from start all the way to finish with Photoshop on the iPhone. Let's go ahead and take a look at the before and the after. Photoshop on the iPhone is amazing. If you haven't tried it already, be sure to do so. And let me know in a comment right down below if you'd like to learn more tutorials for Photoshop on the iPhone. If you enjoyed today's video, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you want to receive more free tutorials. Thanks so much and I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.